Hey guys, it's G. Let's make this bloom. I'll give you a minute to check it out and then we'll jump right in. So today I'm using a custom mixed color for the pillow layer. I had some aqua and some turquoise colored um, house paint. Mix those together gives you what's called deep turquoise. And I'll list the recipes at the end. Uh, it's basically these two colors of house paint with a little bit of acrylic varnish uh, and some water. Okay. So I've been liking um, spreading my pillow over the entire canvas um, before before I apply any of the colors. Um, I find this has been working out well for me uh, in my last six or seven pours. So, you know, if it ain't broke. So I'm just going to even out the sides, make sure I have canvas. Uh, sorry, if, that I have paint covering all parts of the canvas. This is one of the canvases that I had stretched out. And if you missed the video, by the way, I have a video guide on how to stretch your own canvas over stretcher bars or really over any flat surface. If you haven't seen that, you should check that out. I'm quite impatient when it comes to mixing house paints, so... Quite often, I end up with lots of bubbles coming out of the pillow layer. So, you know, aside from the fact that you kind of have to accept that they're going to happen, um, to minimize it, you want to torch as you go along. Just to get out or encourage some of the bubbles to get to the surface. Anyway, you can almost see that little blob in the center that doesn't move from the centrifugal force. But anyway, so I'm going to start with a neon yellow. This is a pigment paint that I've mixed with varnish and water. And again, I'll put all the recipes at the end uh, in a screen that you can screenshot. So I'm starting with the neon yellow. Then I'm going to add a magenta. This magenta is a little bright. It did have, um, when this mix was in the cup before, it did have some neon pink. And our um, neon purple and violet hybrid in the color mix. All of these are mixed with varnish. Recently, I've been trying a recipe where I just use varnish and pouring medium for blooms without any base sea paint. And it's been working out quite well. Um, the stickiness of the varnish when it's been sitting out for, you know, a few hours helps the, uh, what, what should we call it, the elasticity of the acrylic paint. So we'll switch to the side cam and go in for the blowout. I'm going to take a page from Lisa Morvin's book in both the way I'm going to do the blowout and the way I'm going to modify the petals. So... As Lisa and Shelly do, you start in the middle, start blowing, and move backwards. You just find where you aim when you're close, and then as you blow, blow harder and move away. And that will push the paint to the outside. Now, Lisa Marvin, when she does her blowout, she blows out petals. Uh, Shelly, um, who invented the bloom technique, uh, does... A, she blows on the center and then sort of does a turn with her head, a circular motion with her head to hit all the parts that have expanded from the cell activator. Okay, now we'll zoom in. Now we've spread it out. Here we go. My paints are quite thick and I'm using acrylic paints. There's no enamel in this in the pouring medium, so the paints unfortunately don't glide as easily. But with enough force you can get it to happen. Hopefully the cell growth is showing up in the video now. All right. 
it. I may just break up the black in the middle with a straw, just so I don't disturb the other blowouts. should be ready for modifications so what I'm gonna be doing here is doing a little loop somewhere out in the petal and then follow the streak from the petal inwards As you see from the top make a little swirl find that line where two petals meet and just drag inwards along the lines try not to disturb the, the direction that's already there there we go just a few, few quick modifications for a close-up and check this out. Yeah, the cells are looking pretty good, the modifications look good too. Alright, I'm ready for a spin. Now, I encourage you to spin slowly as to not warp the patterns. I'm keeping the video in real time just so you can see. I find it better to encourage the paint to spread across the canvas over multiple spins. It will preserve your patterns and swirls and cell structure far better than if you spin your table fast enough that it covers the canvas in one go. I'm sure you've seen, or I'm sure you've experienced warped cells and warped composition when you spin a little too hard. Or if your paint's a little too runny. That's maybe one of the good things about the paint being too thick. While it is a lot of work to blow out um, the cell activator, thicker paint is able to retain its shape and composition much, much better than thin paint would. Yep, it's looking pretty nice. Just a little bit more. If you want to know how much spin you have left, pick the canvas up and tilt it a little. You're looking for little to no movement in the center. If there's still movement, there's still room to spin paint out. It's also likely that the blob in the center is where your paint will crack first because the top layer will dry much faster than the bottom one, tugging on itself, cracking at the top. Yeah, I like this. Let's go in for another close-up and just check this out. Yep. I really like the contrast between petals that have lots of cells, patterns that don't have cells at all. Um, the black and white in there are creating this incredible like depth. Um, you know, the white looks like it's almost shining in the spots where uh, it didn't get pushed through the colored paint. And the black is almost looking like shadows. And yeah, thanks for watching guys, this was G, I'll see you in the next video, here are the recipes real quick.